you need to forgive. You need to, forgive. You need to let it go. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Give them a hand clap for helping me out up here. Have you ever wished you could rewind this last seven years, seven months, seven days, or seven minutes of your life and start over? If only you could take back that word spoken in anger. Have you ever done that? Have you, come on, couples, get real with me now. You know, have you ever said some stuff? Your mama! Your dad! I've been holding this in for seven years. Have you ever talked about a spouse and parents when they're dead? And they couldn't defend themselves. Oh, that's low down. Come on, son. Some of y'all looking all. You say, well, that's my, that's my normal nature. Well, you got to ask God to help you. That person can't even defend themselves. Or they're estranged. What do you mean? There's no relationship there. You just dig into that, you dig into that sore spot because you're hurt. So you have to say no, no to unwise just Say yes to that forfeit opportunity or salvage that broken relationship. You got to choose to do the righteous thing even when it's not popular with your flesh. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Amen? Unfortunately, there's no rewind button in real life. And one thing we learned, I'm telling you something, I'm continually learning. See, I'm continually learning. Yeah. Going into 20 years of marriage, I'm continually learning this, that guess what? If you don't have anything to, good to say, be quiet. Go to another room. Take a time out. Are y'all with me? Because when you're angry, when you're angry and you go back, have you ever went to a quiet space and then go back to, I got one more thing. Don't look at me deep now. Come on. I got one more thing I got to say. You know, okay, we're going to go in a quiet space. But no, I got to let you know one more thing before we go. How many of that one more thing will get you in trouble? Turn to your neighbor and say, be quiet. Just simply stop it right there. Find that quiet place where the Holy Spirit can speak to you and say, Holy Spirit, show me and tell him the one more thing. Did you hear me? Yeah. Tell, tell him the one more thing. And then after you tell him the one more thing, you listen for his things. Are you with me? Now his things are going to come in fewer words, but it's going to come to a quiet spirit. Sometimes his word comes to me and just says, Howard, check yourself out. Why are you so angry? A lot of times it's not the conversation. It's what's going on on inside of you. Are y'all with me? You got to look deeper, amen? There's no rewind button in real life. However, God does offer us a powerful antidote to heal and re the regrets of past mistakes. It's called forgiveness. Everybody say forgiveness. forgiveness. See, it's possible to give away something that you don't possess. It's impossible. You can't give forgiveness if you haven't received forgiveness. That's why forgiveness is for believers. Are you with me? Because you understand true forgiveness. So you got to give that away. Amen? This is a gift that God gives you that you don't keep for yourself. That's why before we can ever hope to grant forgiveness to others, we must first receive forgiveness in our own lives. Now, even after you get saved, how many of you have to go back and forgive yourself for dumb stuff you've done? How many ever had to do that? I know I have. Have you ever start rehearsing something dumb you've done and get mad at yourself? Then you got to go say, you know, this is what you have to do. When you go there, someone says, I just don't think about it. Anymore. No, you need to think about it, but you need to forgive yourself. And say, Lord, thank you for giving me this experience. Get that for giving me this experience so that I can learn. Amen? Only the forgiven can forgive, truly forgive, in God's way. Amen? You can give an apology, but unless you've been forgiven, you can't give true forgiveness. Are y'all with me? Amen. Let's keep going. Guilt is one of the most debilitating of all human emotions. It wreaks destruction in our relationship with, with others and in our relationship with God. Can we agree with that? Guilt. 
Condemnation. Condemnation says, as I was speaking of earlier in the first service, it says you're never going to do anything. You always mess up. You always uh, uh, don't do the right thing, but can see, and there's no way out. Conviction is what the Holy Spirit gives you. It says you've messed up, but this is what the Word says about it. There's always a way of escape. You're, are you with me? It's, 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 God said, oh, you talk. The, the Holy Spirit will say, you, you talk too much. Be slow to speak and quick to listen. What's God saying? Listen twice as much as you talk. Are you with me? Always a way of escape. And so you then say, Lord, forgive me, and then he wipes it away. You don't keep rehearsing the bad stuff over and over, trying to punish yourself. That's what guilt does. Guilt tries to punish you. Because of the unrealistic expectation of ourselves or others, we suffer with false guilt. However, to be honest, most of the time, people feel guilty because they are guilty. Again, we live in a society that doesn't want to take ownership for what they do. You, 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 when, when they're caught red-handed doing something, they have to blame everybody else. They're like Adam did. Right? Remember Adam in the garden? God caught him red-handed. He came into the garden. He, he could see and hear. He knew everything. And he said, where are you? And he said, we hid ourselves. And then the first thing he said, have you eaten the tree? Well, yeah, the woman that you gave me. He didn't take ownership of his sin. He didn't take ownership of his guilt. God would have wiped it away. The first thing he did was hit himself. Let me tell you something. Guilt will kill you. See, all of us have things that we're ashamed of in our life. Let me give you this illustration that happened in, in England. Many years ago, a prominent playwright in London, England, sent the following anonymous note as a joke to 20 of London's leading citizens, high-respected authorities in the community. And all it says, all has been found out. Leave the city at once. And notice this, all 20 citizens immediately left London. It was a, this was a prank. This was a joke. But even the most proud of people have guilt about things that they haven't uncovered. So we're in a great need for a savior. Unresolved guilt affects us both emotionally and spiritually. One psychiatrist estimated that 70% of people's mental wards could be released today if they knew how to find forgiveness. I see this so important. I see people that deal with mental illness and different mental depression at, at a deeper level. A lot of times they're blaming others, but really the person they're upset about at is themselves. And once they forgive themselves, they, when you tell them this, they say, this is too simple. It, it can't be, it's this person and that person. My dad wasn't this and this, one. no, no. Ultimately, you haven't forgiven yourself for the mistakes that you've made. Guilt breaks our relationship because it's natural. Tendency to avoid people we've wronged. Guilt produces separation. And the same phenomena occurs in our relationship with God. Amen? Let's keep going. Are y'all getting something out of it? Everybody understand that? Amen. Isaiah 59 and 2. Let's look at this word. Come on, highlight this in your tablets. Highlight this, and I'm coming. Get ready to wrap it up. But your, your, this, Isaiah 59 and 2 says, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his faith from you that he will not hear. See, when there's guilt, when there's sin, guess what? It causes stoppage where you can't have the flow of God in your life. Amen. So it's important that you release others so you can have the flow of God. And when you have guilt, you, it's hard to flow. When you, when, you know, I don't know about you. I know the laws of God. If I've offended my wife and I haven't asked for forgiveness, I don't feel like I can reach God. Because I know the word. Are you with me? So some of you say, well, what do you, what do, you do? You, you wimp, you go back and say you're sorry. I sure do. Sure do. And I say, sometimes I say, if it's something I'm struggling with, I say, pray for me. So that I won't stay weak in this area. Are you with me? Guilt will stop the flow of God. Isaiah 59, says, but there's a problem. Your sins have cut you off from God. 
Because of your sin, he has turned away and he will not listen anymore. You hear some people say, oh, I feel so far away from God. These people did this to me, this people. No, no, no. What have you done? Turn your neighbor and say, neighbor, what have you done? You've got to ask God to show you yourself. The inner me's. Wednesday we dealt with the inner me's. What are the things on inside of you that are defeating you, that's causing you to lose victory? Is it your procrastination? Is it your wrong attitude? Is it that your welfare mentality that you expect everybody to do something for you, but you're not willing to do anything yourself? What inner me is keeping you? Is it the way you see yourself? Maybe you see yourself too low. You don't think you, you never think you have enough. You buy the next thing, you still don't have enough. You need the next book to do the next thing that God called you to do when he's giving you everything that you need that pertains to life and godliness. He's giving you all. It's time to walk it out. But you've got to receive his grace. You have to get right with your brothers and sisters. 1 Timothy 1 and 18 says, Cling tightly to your faith in Christ. And always keep your conscience clear. For some people have deliberately violated their conscience. As a result, their faith has been shipwrecked. I don't know about you. I don't want my faith shipwrecked. Amen? I need God 